January 27th. I think it's about 55 degrees. The bees are active. It'll be really wet and chances of snow next week, so I don't know if there'll be much activity next week. I'm looking over at the, the hives here. They all seem to be active today. actually going up through the Guardian with pollen, see if it makes it through or not. She's trying, she's trying. Oh, she went around. Smelling the very fragrant aroma. It smells really good. I'm guessing it's coming from the beehives. I'm trying to see what color the pollen is. Slightly different colored pollen. Uh, I don't know if that's maple or not. It's not that bright yellow anymore. Blooming now. They were starting before, but video of the gap in the box is starting to grow. Here you can start to see where they're pushing it out. Getting close to an eighth of an inch there. Looks like most of them are starting to get that gap too, all the way across. These girls, again, they're either pulling off propolis or they're putting it on. It's going to be getting colder, so I'm not sure. It looks like that one bee doesn't want the other one to pull the propolis off. Just kind of tugging on her. Trying to get her off.
January 29th. This is Hive One's bottom board oil. It's 23 mites. And it looks like it's about due to be filtered, so it's easier to count mites. And there's two small hive beetles. Hive 2 has 35 mites and no small hive beetles. Coming up with 57 mites on Hive 3 and 3 small hive beetles. And our visitor is back. Hive 4 has 103 mites and 4 small hive beetles. When it gets to that many mites, it's best to filter out the oil because it takes so long to count that many mites. Up in the corner, they seem to be dropping some pollen, but it's going from the yellow color to some light green pollen. I'm not sure exactly what that is. This is Nuke 1. Um, can't find any mites on it. I do see one small high beetle. Some of this is starting to get moldy. I'm not sure if it's because there's water in there or just what's falling through the bottom board, but so far it's the only one that's doing that. But this oil definitely needs filtered. This is Nuke 2. I see four mites in here. I see one small high beetle. So where it's lighter up here, this is all water. So there's either condensation in the hive or the rain is blowing in a way that was pushing it into the hive. That would have been the front up there. Both nukes had it, it potentially could have been that because they were both facing east while the rest of the hives were facing north. But it could be condensation as well. Let me just show quickly my uh, setup for straining the oil. These are like the H700 Dynamax tiles. He's using them for um, small hive beetle. I was worried about the bees getting caught in them, so now I've got a giant box of them that I need to use up, but I filter the oil through this, and it just goes into this bucket, and either it'll go back in the bottom boards, or I could put it back in the original bottle. This is the oil that we use. I noticed the stuff from Kroger coagulates at cooler temperatures, so it must be a slightly different type of vegetable oil, whatever vegetable source they used. This one says it's soybeans, so maybe that's the difference, but it's clearer and it doesn't get as cloudy. But this only takes like a minute or so for it to filter through, and if I get water in it like this, then I, I try to pour it and dump the water out first before I start filtering, because the water will go through that filtering it's mesh paper towel. Trying to show how to do this with one hand without spilling it here. Just dump it in there, so. Yeah, and that H700 towel is supported by a sieve. And usually when it's warmer, this, everything flows off pretty easily. But I just take a minute and hose this off and kind of wipe it down so that it's easy to count mites next time. I just walked over to get the Next one, and most of that's already been filtered out, so I'm going to do this again. I'm seeing some water going in there. That's not ideal. Usually the water um, is at the bottom. It separates out, basically, so when you're pouring it, you can kind of see it, so you can slow down or stop when you pour it back into the bottom boards or back into the bottle to keep it not sure the size of this bucket. It's like it's about a gallon, gallon and a half, but the sieve like perfectly fits in it, and uh, it's enough to do the bottom boards that I have without the oil starting to touch the bottom of the sieve. But if it got too deep, you could always just put it back in the bottle and then pour it in. That's it. Takes about a minute. Pour each one out, and it's going to take me about five minutes to clean that up. I just finished uh, hosing down and wiping off the uh, trays, and the oil is pretty much all filtered. And that can all get poured right back into the, uh, into the next bottom boards. And then that'll just go in the trash. After I pour it back in here, it's good to go. Nice and clean. You can kind of see in the bottom. Maybe you can't because of the reflection. So the water does go to the bottom. So when I'm pouring it out, I just got to be careful. You can kind of see the two layers there. I hope you can at least. But when I get close enough, it's it's not really worth that much oil. So you just dump that oil and 
with the water and get fresh oil. So this oil has only been filtered once and as it ages it gets darker and again the stuff from Kroger is also pretty dark so I'll check to see what the ingredient is on that so we can see which one's the better one. If you choose to go this route and buy some oil, looks like soybean oil is the one to get. Looks like the Kroger oil is also soybean oil so I'm not sure exactly why they're so different. So this is looking in the back side of the nukes. This is where the tray was. We're just kind of looking up to see at the bees and you can see what that oxalic acid pan has done to the bottom of the frames. They're kind of all charred. Let's see if I can see it here too. But same thing happened on this one. So with my setup, it makes it a little dangerous. So I'm probably not gonna do OA with these until I get the slatted racks on where I can drill a hole and, and shoot it in with the uh, vaporizer instead of the pan style. I put out a quart of two to one sugar water. This will be pretty cold the next week and I did the same thing yesterday and they took it down while I was gone. It's been out in just about a minute or so. They, they know where it was yesterday, so we're letting all the other girls know. Hopefully they can get it in and get it where it needs to be before the weather gets cold again this coming week. Just looking at the entrances to see which hive actually found it first. That nuke 2 looks a little busy. Nuke 3 and... Sorry. I have four, got a little activity. Three's got a little bit. Two's got very little, but one looks like they may be the ones that found it first. Looks like both of the nukes have found the two to one sugar water that I set out for them now. A lot of activity. From the hives though, kind of seems like it's still just hive one. Which is the stronger hive anyways. Probably the one that needs it less. At least amount. Situation. So they are. She is pulling the uh, propolis off. It's gonna be getting cold. I'm surprised she's pulling it off. So open feeding sort of causes a little feeding frenzy <laughs> here. So you just gotta be careful, especially if you're within a city and your neighbors are close by. Kind of look like they're all crazy, but. walk right through them right now but your neighbors may not know that so be mindful if you choose to open feed what your neighbors may think or if it may affect them at all. But, I mean our chickens are still scratching around as if nothing's going on so they don't really affect much they're just trying to bring in as much syrup as they can. Almost all of the sugar water is already gone. Didn't take them long, probably about two or three hours. January 29th, it's about six o'clock. <clears throat> it's a pretty warm day today, but the uh, temperatures over the next week are gonna drop pretty low. Still seeing capped honey over here on the edge, in this outer frame, right along here. See capped honey. So see capped honey on this frame too. Sorry, let me pull out a little bit. Some a little condensation in the corner here. A little bit in this corner. Just 
and a little bit at the edges. I think the insulation's pretty snug in the middle, so it's keeping it from condensating anywhere except for the edges. At least that's the goal. <clears throat> Condensation's okay as long as it's not on the bees. They can use that moisture. I'll cut out of this one when you go to the second hive. This is hive two. Looking down in here, this, this outer frame, the top edge at least, is capped honey. Hopefully you can see that. Gives me a little peace of mind, they still have a lot of reserves left. <clears throat> Most of these hives, the uh, upper box is you know, about 10 or 20 degrees cooler than the lower box when it cools down at night. But the Hive 4, its its upper box is really close to the lower box, so that one may be eating through its stores really quickly, or brooding up pretty heavily. Either way, they'll eat through their stores. So jump over to Hive 3 here in just a moment. This is Hive 3. Oh, wow. A lot of bees in this hive. This is a double deep, so I don't know if the cluster's moving up or what we got going on. Barely see over here, but down in there, there is still some capped honey. Wow, there are a lot of bees in here. This is high four. Yeah, this is this is a concern. I mean, this is a lot of new comb that's going in here. And there's a lot of bees in this hive. Um, I'll see if I can see any stores in here, but probably working on through them. Not sure if you can see that or not. He's on. There is some honey in the top edge of this frame, at least this as far as I can see. I think I saw some in the, in the top of this frame here. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm definitely seeing some down along this edge too. <clears throat> that makes me feel better. Not necessarily needing to feed quite yet. Yeah, there's still some kept honey down here too. Kind of neat, you can actually see inside the cells the way they built it. There's more of this waggling around here. There's water dripping out of the trees. That waggling, I think, is uh, like a hygienic type thing, they, they want to be cleaned. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get this buttoned up. It looks like it's gonna be about 38 degrees tonight, and then the rest of this week is gonna be pretty chilly. So I hope they can retain as much heat as possible. But yeah, that's, that's fresh comb. Um, I don't know. They're using their resources to build that, or if they found something out there to stimulate them. I did open feed them twice, but that was just yesterday and today. I couldn't imagine them building this much comb in that amount of time. Get them buttoned up now. 
this is nuke one. I'm not sure if they'll be up here or not. Oh. Interesting. So there's some up here. They're just on this side. There's nothing on that front side. I am seeing a bit of condensation along there, but that's uh, an opening, so cold air could be coming in there. That is almost a big drip right here. So prop lies shut. Still a lot of capped honey in here. Not sure if you can see that or not. Next one has some too. Get the button back up too. I forgot I put a brick on this one to keep the insulation even tighter. So let's we'll see what the condensation looks like on that one. Maybe uh, that's something we need to do to that other nuke. If it has less condensation here. Yeah, still got some condensation. This one still has an opening too though. I did not find me. Didn't get that all propolized open or shut. There's some bees up here at the front. Drop this real quick. It looks like there's a little bit of maybe mold along these, these frames. This is probably just way too much space for them. I shouldn't have left this medium on there. You can see that they do have plenty of honey. If they can keep that area warm. Let's see if we can see down here. Can see a cluster to the like the next box down. Let's see if that'll focus on that. Yeah, there they are. So they're the next box down, at least part of the cluster. Okay. Interesting enough, I think that's the uh, a lot of the on cappings and stuff are on this side, so if, if they're in this seam and this seam, that makes sense. This is Nuke 2. I'll go ahead and shut this up so they can keep warm. <laughs> 